I'm sorry. That's Booby. Culpy and Chip. Ah, Avita Zane, we have reached the end, my yes, friends. This is officially the end. This is the officially the end of Darwin Week. Mm -hmm. Which band has <coughs> been the most, um, like, had, has had the most evolution from start to finish, do you think? I, I'm sorry, I can't get past what we're doing right now. Okay. We'll so talk about I really it later. think it's going to be this one. <laughs> We just got done listening to uh, the uh, Sex Offender Registry song of the uh, <laughs> song of the it. year I by Iron Man. Uh, so Darwin Week is the first song on the first record to the last song on the most recent record. Mm -hmm. And the name of this song is Empire of the Clouds by Iron Maiden. Get your popcorn. Get yourself a blankie. It's an 18-minute song. Yep. We don't do interruptions and we don't do cuts, so we're gonna listen to all 18 minutes of the song, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Iron Maiden, Empire of the Clouds. Let's do it. Go. Sunrise, red before the blue, 
hanging at the mast Waiting for command His Majesty's airship The R-101 She's the biggest vessel built by man A giant of the skies For all you unbelievers The Titanic fits inside Drum roll tight, a canvas Silver in the sun Never tested with the fury With the beating yet to come The fury yet to come In the gathering gloom The storm rising in the west The coxswain stared The ship is in their backbone Every sinew, every inch She never flew at full speed A trial never done A fragile out of cover Her Achilles would become An Achilles yet to come Sails up the stairs
way that they did that it, it's a song only Iron Maiden can do honey I can't remember my password I'm like blanking right you now and with your face no it wasn't letting me unlock that way and Zoe sent me like 15 messages like are they alive or <laughs> <laughs> is it just something dumb they want to take a bath <laughs> if there was a real emergency they'd be in here that's true god it's a song only Maiden can do now I know Technically, any you know any '80s guitarist could do from that era, and this wasn't in the '80s, but it, you know any any band that knows their instruments can do it. It's just only Iron Maiden can do a song like this, man. Mm. Golly, you know when I was a kid and I first heard about the Titanic, Dorian was like this too. I became obsessed with it. Remember yes. when Dorian went through that Titanic yes. phase? Yes. Why? Why what do you guys get obsessed with it? Because it was so... Because there were so many things. Like, one, it was, oh, God couldn't sink this ship. That was one. Yeah. That line. And then it's like, why would you say that, family? Like, why would you say something yeah. like that? The other is, it was an I think avoidable... They said even the finger of God couldn't... Yeah. It. it was an avoidable tragedy. Yes. But at the same, it was sort of like this mix. They didn't have enough lifeboats. They didn't have enough lifeboats, and they were being warned a million trillion times, and you know they didn't heed the warnings. Yeah. And anytime there are these disasters, same thing with 9/11. It was like, oh, you know, we we had these guys on lists and all this, and mm -hmm. we were tr we were tracking these guys, and they're taking flight lessons, and they're not trying to figure out how to land, and you know, like and you look back and you're like, how could you? Yes. But part of it is like. Part of it that's fascinating to me is kind of like, you know, 
exercise dominion. Like we yeah. have this concept of, of, as Christians, of human beings are supposed to exercise dominion. Mm -hmm. That we weren't supposed to lounge around in the Garden of Eden and right. just be lazy and fat and naked. Like we right. were, <laughs> we were supposed to go out there and exercise, like dominate the, yeah. the the world that God gave us. <laughs> right. And so. When you have these moments of human ingenuity, mm -hmm. where, um, oddly enough, a lot of the human ingenuity happened in the Western world, which was established by Christianity, sorry, that's a fact, mm -hmm. but when you have these, like, monuments of human ingenuity, and then it, it's almost kind of like, it's almost kind of like God saying, yep, yeah, good. But just make sure you don't get too mm -hmm. arrogant about it. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So, but it, it, I hate. But it also it, it it creates so much obsession in me. I hate when there are preventable tragedies on such a mass scale, and then you hear so and so warned us about this. Right. And then the thing about I think these are these are British people, right? Mm -hmm. The thing that gets me about British pe people that I admire and simultaneously don't agree with is that my perspective on British people is like, if an authority figure says something, yeah. you go along with it. Even, even if you don't think it's a good idea. Even if you know it's not a good idea, uh -huh. but they have such a because they're they're you know there's a monarchy and things like well, Americans, our what we know about our history is that there was an authority figure and we said, fuck you, and we went off and did our thing. Mm -hmm. And so there's this sort of like resistance to authority that is is oh. wired into American DNA. Yeah. yeah. But Britain kind of has this, you know, stoic, do what you're told, oh. even if it's, even if, and, and I think I admire it because as an American, I don't know what that's like because all I know is you better explain to me why we're doing X, Y, and Z. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's why I could never, you know, certain yeah. career choices, like, I couldn't be in, in a certain, mm -hmm. in certain outfits where it was like, you just do what you're told, and, mm -hmm. like, you're gonna have to explain to me why we're doing X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'm not rocking with you. And, mm -hmm. you know, obviously conventional, you know, military, like, forget it. Yeah. They don't care about you. Who are you? I'll explain shit to you. <laughs> Get some water. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so my point is, I admire that. I admire that attitude in the sense of I, I can't relate to it. I've never had that mindset in my entire life. Yeah. But there is something that is, to me, really honorable about I'm going to do my duty. I'm going to follow what you say. You know, I'm going, you know, and then like, the, I loved the fact that the, whoever did this video. Oh, yes. Um, he did really good. I really appreciate. Well, I, I appreciated him putting these quotes in there and stuff. Well, and, and giving context to the. I mean, I think we could yeah. have figured it out with the song, but at the same well, time, yeah. it's like it's like a. And I hate stuff. No, no, oh, babe, it was right I, there. I didn't know you were looking at something. This I hate stuff like this. What, this is a captain, right? Engines wrong, too heavy, can't rise, no one used ship properly, weather bad for long fright, all hopeless, no hope. I knew this would happen, saw it all in a dream. Like, that stuff kills me. It's like, bro, he told you this was not gonna work. So the captain survived? No, he died. Everybody died except for six people in the when crew. When did the captain say that? Them. I guess when it was going down, because right, right before that... And, it, and somebody survived that heard him say it? Yeah. According so to right what? There. To those According present. to those present, the captain repeated his previous fears about the airship and whispered, you know, and he's saying there's no hope, like, it's over, chalas. And it's just like, man, I hate stuff like that. When somebody gets a premonition, Yeah. it's like, why did you freaking do it, bro? Yeah. And then it's like, where was God? It's like, bro. He was warning you. God speaks in one way and in two, though man <laughs> does not perceive it. In a dream, in the vision of a night when deep sleep falls on men, and it says he terrifies them with warnings. Mm -hmm. It's like, like what else is supposed to happen, bro? Right, right. You know, but it's this whole pride and they were the first people to do it and look what we did. And it's just, it, it's that 
Jeez. It, it, it's kind of what you see in the Garden of Eden, where I, where I said that the whole the purpose of the tree. Mm-hmm. A lot of people say it was a test from God and real love and da 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 da. Which I'm sure that that's a that's a that's a. But to me, the whole point of the tree of the, in God saying you can't have that is. We were created to be image bearers of God, rule the earth, have dominion. God's like, yep, 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 you got it. You're there, but you're in the image of God. You're not God. Mm-hmm. So this tree is to say that you report to somebody. Mm-hmm. So you, you're, you're, you guys, you guys are going to do amazing things in this world. You guys are going to come up with things that you can't even think of. Your mm-hmm. your sons and your daughters are going to, but you're not God. Right. And. And so there's always that tension of human ingenuity where, where as humans, we're supposed to go even above and beyond the advancements that we've made mm-hmm. into greater things. And right. Yeah, space exploration and colonize Mars. and But you're not God. Mm-hmm. Like, you have limitations. And you are, no matter what you do, you're still subject to weather something like weather can take you down something mm-hmm. like a spider can take you down and like to to mm-hmm. and it, it's the job i think of human beings to walk into that tension to never be satisfied with the advances that we've made and say we can do more we can do better we can dominate the world more mm-hmm. but to also know that your your feet you you've got feet of clay like yeah. you're fragile you're a human being your life is fragile it can be snuffed out in an instant and if you're if you get engulfed by this crazy hubris, you know hubris is is a word that that is 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 pride in defiance of the gods, right? So like, you know, you get arrogance, you get mm-hmm. pridefulness, but like, human beings get to that point where we start defying the gods, and that's when stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. Same thing with the Challenger disaster. There was a guy that was fighting like hell. Like we're not, you cannot not send this ship. There, there's a movie on Netflix and I, on Amazon and I, I can't watch it because it's like those things kill me these tragedies that are is that preventable. the one that went down in January or something no 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 this is this went down when we were kids and they're and no no not recent January was the month January uh, I don't know what they month have like was, a recording like, of what was happening when they were going down well it's like they weren't going down I mean they it exploded in launch mm. and it was the 80s and it was um, we were we were babies when it happened, but what happened is is that got launched in Cape Canaveral, Florida. Mm-hmm. And so when I lived in Florida, there's all this stuff mm-hmm. about the space. And so um, Krista McAuliffe was a teacher, mm-hmm. and she basically won this thing, and she was able to go on the Challenger thing. It was this big thing, and so I'm like we schools were named after her in Florida and everything, and and. Um, oh. And my, my school, I think I went to, I think it was, my school was Port Malabar Elementary. It wasn't Challenger. But there, there were schools named after these Challenger and stuff like that. And Chris and McCullough School. And, and it, it just, and then I, I would I would hear these stories and I would obsess about them. I would read, it's, it's like what I'm doing right now with Chicago. Mm-hmm. And all these kids are dying in Chicago. And I'm yep. like looking at every <coughs> single story and right. every person. And now... You know, there's social media, so you actually see these people in action, Mm -hmm. and oh, like I showed you that video, it's like, that guy's dead, that guy's dead, that guy's in jail for 40 years. Like, I don't know what it is about, like, these preventable human tragedies when, when it's like, look at the the pinnacle of our, of our intelligence and our, and our, and our exercising of dominion, and then, boom, like, man. And they drove this thing into a crazy storm, apparently. And that was dumb. We need something like, new like that. Like, why would you do that? And then it's like, this politician has to get to where he needs to go on time. Like, all these... Yeah, wait, go to that part, because that, I was like, what? Because I didn't know what was be, happening. The politician can't be late, you know? There it is. There it is. So it's like, we have to go now. We have to take our chances with fate. We have to go for a politician. He can't be late, you know? Wow. And the coxswain stared into the plunging weather glass. It's like, it's like, yeah, you know, royalty and dignitaries, brandy and cigars, you know, like, here we go. Mm-hmm. You know, we're going to, we're going to sacrifice these people's lives on the altar of our pride and our, oh yeah, yeah, we can get you there. We can get you to India. It's like, come on, bro. 
The only thing that I got obsessed with when I was a kid was the Bermuda Triangle. Yeah. That was yeah. one I just I couldn't get enough information. I was yeah. Like, yeah. And yeah, yeah. And like don't... one of them, like the, the the small boat came back with a parrot on it, and I was like, oh, oh. yeah, because <laughs> all the people were gone, but the parrot was left. <laughs> <laughs> Why would this have happened? Yeah. And I was like, why can't this stupid parrot talk? Like, some parrots talk, but then I'm like, could, are they just, they're just parroting what people are saying? It's not like they're like, can communicate. So right. I, it was so frustrating. Dorian, to me. yeah. Dorian, and two, fascinating. Yeah, two or three years ago, Dorian was like, every single day, it was something about the Titanic. Literally, mm -hmm. like, for hours and hours and hours. And yeah, you guys knew, are the same on that. He knew, he knew everybody's name, he knew everybody's. I mean, it was insane. Yeah. Like the details and the, the level of detail. I'm like, yeah, man, you you you'd be. <laughs> there's certain jobs where that's very <laughs> yeah yep. Yeah. yeah. I'm not good for that. Like every day, we're talking about the same subject. Yeah. You know. He he was on a football kick for a while. So yeah, like, but it's not the same subject because there's always some detail and some wrinkle that you don't think about. Yeah, but it's the same. We're talking about the Titanic. Or we're talking about football, or we're talking about. I don't have like fascinations like that that go that deep. Well, I want to do oh, that yeah. for. Yeah, I stopped though, and when Extortion Seventeen went down, I, I stopped looking into stuff like that. As far as like, you know, Extortion Seventeen was uh, the Rangers got stuck in Afghanistan. They got, they weren't even surrounded, but they 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 called in for for help, mm -hmm. and. These Def Group guys were uh, SEAL Team Six guys were uh, Gold Team. They were they were stationed like about ten minutes away, so they all j suited up and went in on a. Uh, it wasn't a Huey. I forgot what it was. It was big lumbering, very slow, not very well armed helicopter, and some sixteen year old kid shot them all outside, killed them all. Kevin Houston, remember Adam Brown? Mm -hmm. The Navy SEAL guy, a Christian dude, and, mm -hmm. and all that, and you know, we commit Adam's soul to to mm -hmm. to his Lord Jesus Christ in yeah. Valhalla, and yes. and then tomorrow we're gonna dispatch our enemies and send them to hell. That whole situation. Yeah. All those guys in the front row, all of them died. Wow. In Extortion 17, and some 16-year-old wow. kid in sandals shot, killed them all. One shot. You know, like I, I never, I never even, I never even, I didn't even look at it. I couldn't even, I couldn't even look into it. I was like, <laughs> that was the end of my uh, researches into those types of disasters. Mm -hmm. But it's one of those things where the Afghan, they got smart. This was like, it's the same thing that happened in Lone Survivor, right? Mm -hmm. Where guys get in trouble, they ask for help, and they know exactly where we're gonna be. There's no element of surprise. It's broad daylight. Shot out of the sky, you know. So, it's, it's, but then it's like one of those preventable situations, you know. Like, and this is another. This is another one of those, and it's oh, like, yeah, man. Sure. And then they you know what I like? basically burn to death. What I like about Iron Maiden is that they will take the hard subjects like this and they bring some honor to it. Yes. You know, they put the excellent music. The the, the vocals, they didn't rush through the song, like, it was literally the perfect length. Like, they did, I didn't even yes. realize that the 18 minutes had passed. I know it. Because I just got sucked right into... The drama. Yeah, the drama of the whole thing, and yeah. they just, they, they captured the story, and they, and you felt like this, you felt the, the tragedy of it, yet, but the, but the glory of it, it just, they just really yeah. did such a good job. Yeah, and you know, it's literally hard to believe that this is the same band that did Prowler. It's just mind blowing. It's mind boggling. I just it's, it's, can't even. That that is that between this and Pantera, as far as evolution goes as a band. Yeah. God Almighty. Oh yeah. Both of, both of those are extremely drastic, drastic. Yeah. Changes. But this one is the <clears throat> most drastic, I think. I don't know. Nah, to me, it's Pantera. Really? Yeah. Because I'm also factoring in the aesthetics. They, they were, they were 
presenting themselves as like a glam band. Yeah. And then they became Pantera. And like, yeah. Like it, like, they, like you would not recognize those bands if you put them side by side. If I said those are the same people, you'd say no, they're not. Right. Whereas with with Maiden, <laughs> aesthetically, you'd be like, oh, those are the same people. So that that's why I'm saying Pantera evolved in my mind more than Maiden did. Although I agree, I I totally well, well I mean you. aesthetically, you don't think that. When you what they look like? Yeah. What but they, I didn't see a before and after picture. With yeah, them, but, but I mean, I I I could pretty much guess what they're gonna look like. It's gonna be pretty much the same. I, show me a picture of them when they were. So, Maiden 2000. Maiden 1980. All I said was Maiden, as if Google knows I'm talking about Iron Maiden. Google, <laughs> Google wouldn't know about Iron Maiden. But while I'm looking for that, but yeah, I also like that too, that they gave the. Because you know, it's like. There are other disasters where probably hundreds of thousands or maybe hundreds of people died, so it's like, you know, hey, only 48 people died, but mm -hmm. like. 48 people died, mm -hmm. so we're going to devote the yeah. the time necessary to it, and I really, really appreciated that. Okay, so that's 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 the first picture. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say that those are completely different bands. You, you, you would, you, you For would... For what we see now? You would, you would say that that's like a vastly different uh, look? Those look totally different to you? No. I'd just say they aged. They aged, sure, they aged, but this guy yeah. is is this guy. I mean, I could tell, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying. But Pantera, it's like, what? <laughs> yeah, fine. Okay, band. I'll throw in with you in that, but but, but but I can't believe the 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 evolution in this band. To go from a three minute song about some freaking pervert. Yes, I agree with to that. To this level of gravity. And that level of excellence with the instruments and the vocals and pulling it together and finding a subject subject matter that had some real weight to it. Something that actually, like, this is one of those songs, I, I don't pass out 11s, but I'm actually giving this one an 11. Whoa. Yeah, because this is, this is like, this is one of those things where you can, this is important all throughout the ages. Like, right. there's a lesson in here about... First of all, listen to your instincts. If you're, if you have, or your dreams, you know, like whatever you believe. Yeah, <laughs> like listen to your premonitions. You, your yeah, for something major like that. Yeah, like, especially this is like a new thing. I, just wow, you know. And then the the fact that because people didn't listen to that, you know, people died, and just. Wow, and then when you see these pictures of how huge <coughs> this thing was, it's like... The Titanic could fit in that thing. Yeah. yeah. That was mind-blowing uh -huh. to me. Like, whoa. Like, when you think about the scale, like, I forgot who reached out to me. I think it was Steven, um, where he said, Europe can fit into the Sudan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. What in the world? Yeah. Um, yeah, the, just a big... And ly lyrically, too, like... Great lady, giant of the skies, you hold them in your arms. Yeah. That's t that's just talking about the ship. Mm -hmm. But he personifies it as this woman who holds... And yeah, then, as a silver ghost. Right, yeah, yeah. And they, they, they were asleep in their graves because... Of, and, and as the person who produced the video showed us, everybody was asleep. But they were asleep in their graves. It's like, whoa. So like, this is like crazy, crazy... And then, of course, the irony of the millionth chance, because apparently they were saying there's a one in a million chance of us crashing or, oh, or, or whatever. Word. You know, at the end, that's what I pieced together was they were saying, you know, one in a million or whatever. Yeah. And and you know, just yeah, the the layers, the the yeah, there it is, right there. Storm is raging around you, a million to one. That's mm -hmm. what he said. So I'm sure somebody was saying, oh. Yeah, I mean, we'll crash. There's a million to one odds that we'll crash, you know? And, okay, well, what's the millionth one? Because you freaking flew into a storm. Yeah, that, you know, that was... You know, like... And I don't want to disrespect their memories by judging the guy, but good Lord. And, you know, he paid his own price for it. You know, when he's going down, he said there's... And that's a crazy thing, because he, he whispered it. Because I think as a captain, he realized, like, the last few moments of these people's lives, there's no reason to make these people panic. But, like, he says, like, there's no hope. Like, it's over. It's like, wow, bro. Yeah, because some of them might have been thinking, maybe for land, maybe we'll be able to... But he knew. 
There's no. Then they. Then something. The thing just friggin' ignited. But because the 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 I guess the sacks that were holding with the gas yeah. or something just ripped open. Well, the the guy <laughs> said that there was one. There was a the the major mistake. But I don't I don't really. I'm probably gonna look into this more because there was probably like. There's probably going to be some situation where they could have actually survived the crash mm -hmm. for the most part, but then the flames ended up killing them. And if somebody would have, you know, whatever, whatever, then, you know, it's like somebody what was... What was this thing made out of? I mean, steel, I'm assuming, but the thing crumbled like a toy because yeah. of the, you know, the impact. But, you know, some of this is like... I was listening, I think it was a pastor one time, and, and he was talking about how people were angry about flight delays. Oh, and the guy's yeah. like, the guy's like, would you rather them fly into the storm and everybody that you love dies? Right. Like, that's how we are. Yep. Like, if those politicians, if they would have said, if the captain would be like, screw all of you, I'm not flying this thing. You're gonna be late to your little Indian. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Too bad. Yeah. You know, there would have been all this. Oh, I can't believe this, and da 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 da. And it's like, there are a lot of things that those people make decisions on that have probably saved thousands of lives yeah. all those like flight delays at the airport and all that like we need to really th on a real pre now stuff that we can relate to like on a real practical level like fix your attitude bro mm -hmm. like <laughs> these people are are making decisions for us for our safety but we have right. where we want to go yeah we have our agendas. We're just like these people. You see what I'm saying? Oh yeah. No, and, you're right. And we're and, you're right because when we were coming back from Cali, I was like, we better not get delayed. Right. We they better not cancel this flight it was, because there was, there was bad it was weather. It was snowing. It's bad weather and all this. And I'm thinking to myself, well, what are you talking about? We better not get delayed. It'd be better than that than we not ever see our kids again because we're in in Jenna. You know, like. Yeah, but it's but it's human nature though, because I've I've been on a ton of flights. Where I'm like, man, <coughs> you know what I mean? Like, let's go right now. We gotta go right now. And it's like, no, we're not going anywhere. Like, mm -hmm. da, da 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 da. And I'm like, no, we need to go right now. Didn't you hear the? And they're like, yeah, we're not going anywhere. Right. We don't report to you. Uh -huh. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Sit down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have a sandwich. Something. Yeah, but. God, but that's human nature. It's crazy. Like, you know, of course, hindsight's always twenty twenty. This is definitely a crazy, crazy song. I can't believe six people survived it. I know. It's like, how? Did they probably, they probably, as soon as that thing hit the ground, they were out. Because, uh, look, he said all of them burned to death. Oh, I know. So, looks like they made it out alive for the most part from the, from the initial crash. You know, like... Somebody saw the roof of a church. I know. Like, that's low. Uh-huh. That's, that's, uh... And you always think to yourself, well, why didn't you jump out? You that's know, what I was thinking. People watch too many action movies. Like, no, I was not... thinking, like, they didn't have any... <laughs> people watch too many action movies. I was just thinking, like, I'm surprised that they didn't have, like, yeah, some parachute things and... Par... <laughs> <laughs> Babe, if they're low enough... <laughs> To see a church, the parachute's, the parachute's not, gonna not gonna do a damn well, thing. Well, do something. God, oh man, nothing you can do. <laughs> you should, you should uh, cry out to Allah, and inshallah, he'll give you some mercy. But plus, you can't just open a door, right? When it's low like that. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 not. It's, it's I still sad, don't understand though. all those six people survived. It's sad. But yeah, wow, what a wild story. They did such a great job with it. What a great way to end. Um, Darwin me too. Yep. <laughs> um, with such a I, huge I, evolution. I agree with you though, because like if you look at sonically, if you look at Dime Solo and that ride my rocket thing, yeah. he had the squeal and the yeah. screen yeah, right there. It. Like that that like I I could I'm like, that's Dime Bank Daryl. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Whereas in the first song for the, for a maiden I couldn't tell. I'm like, where is my Iron Maiden? Yeah. Where'd they go? <laughs> you know, I couldn't tell sonically because of the voice, and I couldn't tell instrumentally. I couldn't or it sound, or con a content of lyrics. Yeah, it sounded extremely generic to me. The the music, the musicianship. Whereas yeah. this one, it was like that is Iron Maiden. Mm -hmm. That is Iron Maiden. And then the way they built it up, they started out on the piano, mm -hmm. and they allowed oh, beautiful. They let the thing freaking play out you know and then they 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 had the rising action they built it up but i agree with you i think musically 
this was the, cr the most drastic oh. evolution musically. If we just did the music, this is the most drastic evolution. If you include aesthetics, then I gotta give it to Pantera. Because they just became a completely different band. But sonically, I give it to, to Maiden. So, I'm so gonna to me, it's such a big change. Just the, the gap is so big between, from Prowler, Prowler to this that it's, the, they win. The, I don't care even the, if you win. But include. the look, look at the look. Fine, for but Pantera. the look Where is the doesn't affect Where is this the sound as much. Where's the Pantera thing on the jiggy? Oh. Because you have them side by side on, on the Pantera one. It's in one of these. Yeah. Right there. there it is. Right there. Like, look at that. Like, that is a completely different band. Like, you would be, you know what I'm saying? Like, you wouldn't be able to tell at all. Yeah. Like, that is way more drastic than, than Maiden. But. Musically and what, like, just. I think you convinced me. I, I give a little, I give a, you know when they, you know, the race and then they're like, the, and then like yeah. you look at the nose. I give a nose to Iron Maiden. But definitely an honorable mention of Pantera, but I agree with you, like, that was way, that was so drastic of a, of a difference. But Pantera, the last song they did, I'll Cast a Shadow, was real existential. Mm -hmm. Both of those songs were so deep and meaningful, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna give it to Maiden. <sighs> and you captured me for 18 minutes. I don't believe anybody else could have done that. I I love Pantera. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I love it. Love them. But right. I there's no... I'm not saying no, for Maiden, some 18-minute Maiden, Pantera song. Maiden, Maiden, like, like I said, Maiden's the only band that could have, that could have done this song. <laughs> and and, and, and Prowler was so bad. <laughs> and, here, here, okay, here's why I'm going to put Maiden above Pantera. I felt like because they didn't know that this was going to be their last and final record together, Dime didn't do a solo in I'll Cast a Shadow. There wasn't a solo in I'll okay. Cast a Shadow, which, you know, so I think that hurt them. Okay, so I'm going to give it to Maiden. This is, this is not a debate, by the way, about what's a better band. No. Because we know that they're just too different to be compared. What we're talking about is which band had the most dramatic evolution right. as artists from the first song to the last song and and you, you have to say it's uh it's maiden hands down and, yeah it just so many ways a three minute song 18 minute song yeah. song about a sex offender with repeated lyrics Poetry about a horrible disaster. And the thing is, no existential. Like Pantera was doing, like their first song. It was typical for like those. A teenage You know boy. what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. But but this loop of Iron Maiden, you're like, what? Why would you even? You know? And to think that those people became yeah, it's just crazy. It's just wild. Yeah, there are just there are just way too many differences. And then of course they they change the singer, mm -hmm. which counts. Mm -hmm. And and. You know, yeah. So, whoa! I, I didn't think anybody was gonna be Pantera, but you had a convincing argument. And then when I, I'm looking at them, I'm looking at the Pantera pictures right now, and they didn't have a dime solo. Yeah. And I think that that hurt them. So, all right. Uh, but either way, I love Pantera. So Dimebag Daryl. You didn't this it. A I give it a ten. I give it a ten. Mm -hmm. I give it a ten. Dimebag Daryl is my favorite metal guitarist, aside from Head. How who, come? Who is my, you know. How come not an eleven? Elevens to you me. You can time capsule this. You don't think? No, ten is a time capsule. Eleven is you have to listen to this. This is necessary for you as a human being to listen to this song. Oh, oh, that's, that's what eleven is. Yeah. Um, 11's, I know when an 11 is for me, like, before the song is over. Oh. And it just didn't hit me that way. Mm. But it, it's still a masterpiece of a song, and mm. I got definitely got lost in the song. At the same time, I was very grateful that that guy put that information in there. Mm -hmm. And the song, the, the, there was enough musical interludes, and he picked the exact perfect place to put them there. So, shout out to the guy. I don't know. Great, 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 great song. Great all around. Um... Slipknot had a very good evolution as well. Mm -hmm. Like you could definitely see their growth. It wasn't as drastic yeah. as Pantera and Maiden, but you can definitely see their growth. Who had the least evolution between the two songs? The two? What two? Between the two songs. Oh, um. 
I'd say corn had the least. They evolved the least. You were saying that corn took a step backwards. They did. Um, I'm never gonna say that as a corn fan, but I think corn probably had the least. Ghost. What about ghost? Yeah. Well, ghost. I, I think we made a mistake with ghost because we should have done behemoth because yeah. behemoth has a 20 year. Yeah. You know, whatever. And the ghost song wasn't even a ghost song; it was a cover. So. Yeah. Right. So you couldn't factor the lyrics in. Yeah. 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 Wow. Um, 11 for me. But I think Korn oh. was probably the least evolved of the, of the bands. I think. Well, yeah. Yeah, I guess you'd ha I guess I'd have to go with that because I feel like they went backwards. And then the look, they, they look exactly the same. And it's not, a, it's not yeah. a detraction from them. It's just they look the same. It's the right. same band. And... Right. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Good stuff. I really enjoyed this. This is probably the, the best... That this one was fun. It yeah. really would have put it over the top if we would have done Behemoth instead of Ghost. But yeah. it was still, I, I really, 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 really enjoyed this. Yeah. Um, so anyway, hope so you guys for, enjoyed uh, it. Just sticking it out with us. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed it too. Darwin Week, ladies and gentlemen, is gone. You did a damn good job, babe. You're the MVP of Darwin Week. Somebody should do a Darwin Week of, of this versus sick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Leah, help us out. And then you can see the evolution there. Oh, yeah. And 98% of that evolution is attributable to you. So, good job. Vin out. For you. Gone. The empire of the clouds. Just ashes in our past. Just ashes at the last.